In this video, we'll learn how to use conditionals with loops in P5.js. These two control structures together help us generate patterns and interactions that are very complex, but require very little code. Here's a variation on the nested loop example with a couple of small differences. I've added three variables. SpaceX controls the horizontal spacing between columns. Space Y controls the vertical spacing between rows and diam controls the size of each circle. I've plugged those into each of our inner and outer for loops and the ellipse function respectively. So my goal here is to change the monochrome grid into a checkerboard pattern and to help visualize I've made a diagram. So I can see how the colors alternate by both row number and column number and that gives me some clues to how I might tackle this in P5. Let's jump back into our code and inside my inner for loop, I'd like to add a conditional to test which column number should get a different color. So maybe I can say if X is equal to 25, set the fill to red, else set the fill to white. That sets the second column to red. It makes sense it's the second column because remember, we're starting X at zero, then incrementing by the value of this SpaceX variable, which is 25. So each of our columns should be 25 units apart from one another. Testing whether x equals 50 highlights the third column, 75 gives me the fourth column, and so on. Now, it's a little clunky going in increments of 25. I'd like this to match more closely the diagram that we just saw in my spreadsheet, where I can just say column one, or column two, or column three, for example. So let's make a local variable called call, and I'll use that to store the column number. All we have to do to get that is take x, and divide it by that space x variable. Now I can make my conditional a bit more readable. If call is equal to one, highlight it, or two or three and so on. I'll also make one to give me row numbers where I just divide y by space y. So that's one step closer to getting the pattern that I want. Let's take a look back at the diagram. Notice though, I need a way to alternate within each row or column between red and white every other cell. I'm noticing that each of my row and column lists increase sequentially starting from zero. And I'm wondering if there's a way that I can get an alternating pattern from that sequence. Well, yeah, odds and evens. So I know that I can divide an even number by two and it divides perfectly with nothing left over. But if I take an odd number and divide it by two, I'll have a remainder of one. But how can we test for whether a number is odd or even in code? Well, believe it or not, there's a math-based way to do just that with a special operator called modulo, or mod for short. We access it using the percentage symbol. So mod gives us the remainder only of one number divided by another. So let's take six mod two, for instance. Two goes into six three times with nothing left over. So six mod two is zero. Now let's try seven mod two. 2 goes into 7 3 times with a remainder of 1. Because 3 times 2 is 6, we would need that remainder of 1 to get back to 7. So 7 mod 2 is 1. In general, any even number mod 2 will be 0, and any odd number mod 2 will be 1. So let's change that conditional to test for whether call modulo 2 is equal to 0. Notice that's highlighting every other column in my grid. Now we could change the number that we're applying our mod with. So let's say we take mod of three, I'd get every third column instead. Mod four would give us every fourth column and so on. And I'll change it back to two for now. So again, we're one step closer to getting that checkerboard pattern. Let's go back to our diagram. So I've gotten the vertical columns to alternate, but I also need to get the rows to alternate as well. And I'm noticing how whenever both the column and the row number are even, or both the column and the row number are odd, they're filled in red. So that's another clue to setting this up in code. And what I'd like to do is adapt my conditional to test for whether both the row and column number are even. And I can do that by chaining another Boolean test together using the AND symbol, which is two ampersands. So I'll say if call mod two equals zero and row mod two equals zero, fill with red. So now we're highlighting red only when both the row and the column are even. 
So again, one tiny step closer to a checkerboard, but notice all of my odd rows and columns are still completely white. So let's add an else if to my conditional. And this time I'll test for whether call mod two equals one and row mod two equals one. Then fill with red. Okay, so there's my checkerboard. Now I'm noticing in my conditionals, I can actually simplify how they're set up. Let's think about it. In both cases, I'm testing for whether call mod two and row mod two are equal to the same thing, then setting the fill to red if they are. So I could simplify each of these conditionals by testing if call mod two and row mod two are equal to each other. Now that gives me a completely identical else if block, which is redundant, so I can just get rid of it. So that's just one example of a way that we can combine loops with conditionals to get complex patterns from just a little bit of code in P5.js.